Hello everyone, welcome back to Shellcode. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use Recycle View, and it's basically just a way to create a list of widgets like this, and we can scroll through them. So we have loads of different buttons here that just go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up to 20. So I'm just in an empty Python file here, and the first thing we're going to want to do is obviously import Kivi. So we'll do from Kivi, from Kivi.app, import app. And then we'll also want to import recycle view. So it'll be from kivi.uix.recycle view, import recycle view. And now that we've got that, we just want to create our normal app class. So we can just do class my app, and it'll inherit from app, and then define build, which is our build method. And we can, for the moment, we'll just return zero because we don't have anything to return. And then we can do my app dot run. And that's basically just our normal app that we'd always create in every video. Um, but now we're going to create our recycle view. We're going to do class RV. And it, it, you can call it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it RV for recycle view. And it's going to inherit from recycle view. So recycle view. Like that. And then we'll have the init method. And we can do super.init. And that just... Uh, calls the init method for recycle view and that's all you need to do here and now into the my.kv file so the first thing we want to do in the uh, kv file is we want to select this rv class and we can do that with um, some less than and greater than sign and typing rv and then a colon then in here we're going to want to set the view class and this is basically defining what widget we're going to use in the um in the recycle view so if i say view class and then we'll set it to button. That means that all the widgets in the recycle view are going to use a button like we saw in the demonstration. But we could also have this as a label or any other widget. I'm just gonna keep I'm just gonna keep it a button. And then here we're going to have a recycle box layout. And basically this is just another it's a box layout, but it's in a recycle view, and it basically allows you to uh, change how the widgets, in our case, the buttons, how the buttons look in the recycle view. I'm just going to paste in some uh, positioning and sizing for the recycle box layout. If you want to learn more about positioning and sizing, then you can click on the video up here. I'm not sure which corner it'll be, but it basically it'll show you how to use positioning and sizing. These properties are basically just going to make it look nice. And now we want to create the actual widgets. We've defined what the widgets are going to be and what they're going to look like here, but now we need to actually create them in the recycle view. So here we can do self.data, self and this is going to be list comprehension. If you don't know what that is, you can just click on one of the videos up here. It tells you all about what list comprehension is. For i in range, uh, we'll do it 20 times. We can do text, and it can be str, i, and we'll close it off like that. So basically, what we're doing here is we're iterating over a range 20 times so we're just looping 20 times over and every time we iterate we're going to create a button as we've defined up here we've set the view class to be button and we're setting the text property of the buttons to the uh to the number that we're on and then we're casting it to a string if you don't understand at the moment just hold on a bit but basically now we want to return rv and if we run it now you can see we get some buttons it starts at zero and it goes all the way to 19 and we can just scroll through them like this. I'll try and explain what we're doing with self.data here because it is quite complicated. We're looping 20 times and each time we're going to create a button because we've said the widgets need to be buttons in the view class up here. So we're going to create 20 buttons because we're iterating over it 20 times. But then we're going to set the text property of those buttons. We're setting it to the current digit of the loop. But we have to cast it to a string because if we set it to i and we just run it now. Uh, we can see we get an error. Button.txt only accepts strings, so we basically just have to cast it here. And then we'll get 20 buttons, each with the um, index of the loop on it. So we get 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And now we can actually have our own custom list. So we might just have like a variable called content, and it's a list. And then we can go for item in content. Then we'll set the text to be just the item. And then in the content list, we can just have, hello, um, this is a string. And then we'll have another string. And because there's three items in this content list, 
we're going to loop over it three times. Oh yeah, I've got a uh, typo here. Because we got three items in this list, we're going to loop over three times. So that means we'll be creating three buttons. And then we're going to set the text of each button to the current item in the list. So the first one's going to say hello, the second one's going to say this is a string, and then and the third one is going to be another string. So if you have any questions or comments about what we've just done here, it was quite complicated, you can just leave them down below in the comment section. If you'd like to see how to use a filter function, then you can click on this video around here. Otherwise, that's it from me. Cheers and goodbye.